How do I respond to Brad's allegations that I was difficult to work with and there are substance abuse issues? I mean, everybody's difficult to work with, I guess, at some points or another. I, I wouldn't lay down. If I thought something was, I wanted it changed, I'd say I wanted it changed. I wouldn't just get, I wouldn't just, you know, go along with whatever and be like, yeah, that's the greatest thing. Because I definitely thought things needed to be changed at certain so parts of songs or rewriting of songs or people's verses maybe weren't up to par and I, no one would say anything to them. I always thought you're supposed to push each other and get better and constructive criticism, but nobody, even me, I'm guilty of it, but... Nobody could take the constructive criticism and be like, yeah, verse really ain't up to par. You might, you do better. Just try something different. Um, we wouldn't say that, so shit would go out. Um, I wouldn't even hear mixes until, sometimes until the record came out, where I might one of my backups turned or want to redo it, but I never was afforded the opportunity for many years of being involved or getting phone calls or anything of that nature. It would just... Uh, Definitely wasn't motivated. And to go hang out with people that, obviously you know how they feel now, that they think I'm a liar, thief, junkie, addict. They, uh, that's that's how I've been treated, like just at arm's distance. You know, I'll walk into a room and they'll be having a conversation and then it'll stop. And I'm just sitting there like, wow, all right. I had a breathalyzer in my car for a long time. I go to the studio, you know I'm not drinking and cause I gotta drive home. And I'm still getting that treatment. Even when I was, you know, wasn't even high, wasn't nothing, just coming in, I get that treatment. Um, towards the end, it was a lot more of that, where, you know, a lot of backdoor meetings, and you start feeling that way, you don't want to be around that. So it wasn't exactly my funnest place to be in hanging with those guys. I didn't hang with them anyway, and I just did. It wasn't where I wanted to be. I, I did it for a lot of years for the fans, to be honest with you. I thought about quitting a lot, and I would hold on because I'd read something from the fans about how it's the music saved their life, or thank you so much, or I was so depressed I listened to this song, it brings me up, this one, every... So I, I looked at it at the greater, the greater good of it all, like, hey man, you know, it's for the fans, dude, just do, do what you gotta do, keep it going, keep it going, and uh, it was just too much at the end of the day, but... Yeah, when you don't want to be somewhere, it probably was difficult. As it is difficult to work with, with them, too. Everybody's got strong personalities in that band. That's being a musician. And uh, you get, you got your own beliefs and, and whatnot. So, you know, everybody butted heads every now and again, for sure. But, okay, I mean, that it is what it is. That's what it was. Um... I think a lot of people I work with as far as producers and everything are tripping, tripping out engineers because I'm actually easy to work with. I get shit done quick. I'm in there, I can record stuff pretty quick. When I did my EP, this freaking out one, I was in DJ Mug's studio in, in Burbank and I did all five songs in one day. And they were tripping because we just go, boom, just go over, just knocking them out. And, uh, a lot of people are stoked that actually work with me because I, I come in and I work. Um, D-Lo, real friends stay true and when times are tough, real friends offer rehab to those who need it. Nothing cool about drunk, junkies, thieves, and liars. Real friends do, are there when times are tough and, and when uh, I had some tough times come up financially where I was... Uh, needed some help a few hundred dollars and uh, no one would come to my side to help I ended up my dad ended up loaning me the money I ended up paying him back within 10 days like I told Loke I would like I told you know everybody because we were getting paid for from a tour so we were getting some money coming in within the next couple of days I just had to make a payment that day or else you know I just couldn't be late and uh, and and yeah they don't come, they wouldn't come to my help. They wouldn't come help me out. I was on the verge of being homeless. They would rather me be homeless uh, with my two dogs than help me out with a couple hundred dollars. <clears throat> so, times were tough for a long time. And 
It's just, you know, <laughs> it's stupid. That whole thing is just ridiculous. And and to be real too, D Loke didn't write that comment. Brad X posted that like five minutes before that. D Loke just forwarded it, copied it, and did it. So I want to get your quote straight in there before you send it out. You didn't write that. True colors and character reveal themselves during times of struggle. Quitters and addicts get exploited by the bottom feeders. Onwards and upwards, Daddy X. All right. Um, fucking whatever, dude. Like I don't let I, I don't let it get to me anymore. I'm so, I'm so happy. I don't have to deal with that anymore. I don't have that. <laughs> I just don't have that anymore in my life. It's funny. Character re reveal themselves. I mean, they can have their opinions about me. They can. Have, People I care about are whose opinions I really care about. I'm actually, I help a lot of people out. Actually, you can, I, I can line, you know, tons of people up. I'll, I'll help friends move. I'll help friends. Do it. I'm not too big to do anything. I'll, if, if I can do it, I'm gonna help you do it. My friends know that. I'll get my hands dirty. I'll do whatever I need to do to, to do shit. I'm not too good. I will answer your call and I will be there to help. And, uh, I mean, if you're hungry, come to my house. I had one of my friends, my old roommate, said. He was just getting back on his feet. He moved out. And he said, you know, he's eating like every other day or something. I said, well, dude, I don't ever want to hear that come out of your mouth again. You know where I live. Come to my house, dude. Whether it's a Top Ramen or a sandwich, come to my house, dude. I don't want to hear you're hungry. I don't like to hear that. That's not cool. Any friend calls me up, don't have nowhere to stay, need somewhere to crash for the night, come to my house. Stay. You're good. I got you. Uh, Chucky, Chucky's done that a few times. He'll call me, you know, hanging out, whatever, and if he was his friends doing something, call me and be like, hey, what's going on? Do you mind, why do I come over and crash? I'll be like, yeah, no problem. I'm actually just chilling. Um, but I'll wait up, roll on. You know, you always got a place to stay here. You don't gotta, you don't gotta ask, dude. You know, you're good. Um, onwards and upwards. Everything's gonna work itself out. Yeah, they're gonna, things are gonna fucking work themselves out. Trust me. Quitters and addicts, too. Quitters. If anyone noticed, Brad X wasn't at the gathering of the Juggalos or that little run. Six days prior to that, he gave us all emails saying he's not coming on the run. He blamed me for leaving the group. Not so many words, but says people's... Um, people that hang with. So I was talking about my friends or something I hang with, I guess, for one. And then he said <coughs> that he... Uh, has tried to put policies in place. Mind you, he's got other things going on, I'm sure, and it just gave me an excuse to, to leave and not to worry about it. But, uh, he's, you know, he blamed on me, said, you know, he's offered, put ban policies in place, and they didn't, you know, it, uh, whatever this, he's tried to help, offered rehab. Rehab's just ridiculous, dude, it's funny. I went to rehab when I was younger um, for like acid and shit, other things. It wasn't anything gnarly. It was, and I went and it was what it was. But I have friends that have problems, like real problems, that do some of the stuff that they think that I'm doing. They probably think that because I have friends that actually have problems, drug problems. And I'm actually one that's like calls them to make sure they're doing all right today. See what they're doing. See if they want someone to hang out with. Be the positive person in their life that, that changes that you know, helps them, not pushes them away, talks down on them, makes them feel bad about themselves even more, and, and whatever, like, that's just, that's not it, but he left, and then two months later, he called up and said, he's coming back, and I'm thinking to myself, wait a minute, so you said all this shit pretty much about me, and said you're quitting the van because of me, Nothing's changed <clears throat> in, in the two months. Nothing, I mean, nothing had changed. I, I hadn't changed my life. I hadn't changed doing anything. I wasn't doing anything bad anyway, so I just hadn't changed. And I was wondering, why? What, why are you coming back now? What's the problem that gnarly to where you were leaving the group? You couldn't take it anymore. You're quitting the group. Two months later, you're coming back like the problem solved. Well, I guess I guess the problem wasn't that big to begin with. Just common sense. If something's gnarly enough to where I gotta fucking leave because I can't be around that anymore, I'm not gonna come back two two months later 
if unless that fucking problem is changed and fixed. Bottom line, something's changed. Not one thing changed in that whole time, and he came back. So I, my my thing is he's probably going through something else, and maybe caught him at the wrong moment around me, or maybe I said something that he took the wrong way. He always takes it the wrong way. I always joke about shit and just be like, "Oh man, like like are you fucking kidding me?" Yeah, you know, he's like this or something, and he just looked like, are you fucking... Damn, that's crazy. You're fucking... No, I'm joking. That's a hundred... Take a fucking joke. A hundred percent joke. Fuck. But maybe he took something the wrong way, but bottom line is nothing changed, and he came back. So obviously the problem wasn't that gnarly of whatever he thought was a problem. Um, do anybody in the group have any issues with substance abuse? Nobody has... No, I, we're in a fucking band too. Let's get real. You know, like I said, this ain't a Christian rock group. This ain't a, uh, we don't work for Sesame Street. Those guys, you know, we all in our time have smoked a lot of weed um, and dabs. Other people have done other drugs as well in the group. They don't talk about it, but uh, excuse me, they have. And sometimes, yeah, I, I mean, I think there's such a thing as sometimes getting too high. I was too high in Denver this last weekend, but that was off dabs. That was just I literally started fucking seeing tracers off marijuana. It was fucking dope, but it's pretty crazy. But they, uh, nobody's got any. I'm not gonna talk shit on no one like that. Nobody's doing no drugs or nothing. It just is what it. it they're not. They smoke a hell of a lot of weed. There it is. Local, I have a couple beers here and there. Actually, I have a couple mojitos here and there. Uh, that's, you know. Uh, wasted. The sign of a twisted wasted. I talk about crack and heroin. What was... Uh, was that just for the song or the legitimate vices? Uh, yeah, no, that was for the song. 100%. Uh, the song's called Wasted. I just took it to the extreme. But when and where to look a oh, fuck it, I'll just smoke us some more crack. Drinking vodka out the bucket, mixed with heroin and smack. Me getting sober, that's hilarious. The joke of the year. After a taste of getting wasted, I'm in it my career. That was for the song. Not real vices, not a problem. Like I said, I've never done crack, never would. You're good. <clears throat> Do you have any regrets getting your SRH big tattoo covered up now that you're friendly with Zinger and signed to Sub Noise? I never was not signed to Sub Noise, first of all. Um, I signed, I do one one record deals with them. I'd signed another deal after Laughing came out to do one more record. Um, Zinger's fine. He doesn't have any hard feelings. The other owner, Ryan White, doesn't have any hard feelings with me. They understand that was my career, that was my band. I was being pressured by my band. I was also being fed kind of information. Um, obviously all negative towards them about things they've done and and whatnot. And so yeah, I ended up getting it covered up. Um, started getting it covered up. And I saw a comment on Facebook, somebody put, you know what? He probably got that covered up in a latch disc in a last ditch effort to try to salvage something he thought you know, which is true. That was the most true thing I could see. Like, fuck, all right. I caught, I was catching so much shit from it from the guy still. I was just over it. Like, they always make comments. They're always this. Always, like, fucking little snide comments. You know, fuck it. Cool. You don't think I'm down? You don't think that? I was asking, hey, you talk to Zinger? Zinger write you a check? This is my, I ain't talked to Zinger six months, months, like, since, oh, no. Why do you keep asking me that? No, I haven't. No, fuck. Like, I can't even believe you're fucking even asking me that still. Like, you don't fucking believe anything I say. Like, that, I just could be around people like that. But, yeah, no, I hadn't, and, and yeah, I got it covered up. And those guys understand. They're actually reasonable people. They they understand that it was a career. It was my job. And I got to do what I got to do to make my money to feed my dogs and pay my bills, feed myself. So, but Zinger ain't mad, so no one else should be. When I replaced Saint Dog, did I receive any hate from fans? Uh, yeah. People were bummed. People I was very skeptical of me. It took years and years to fucking get them, but they all turned eventually. They're all on the side now. Um, so, whatever. When 
uh, when did you come to the realization that you wanted to part ways with the Combat Kings? I, like I said, it crossed my mind for years. Um, but like I said, I was always trying to make it work. Trying to work it out. Looking, focusing on the good things about it. And um, I, don't, I don't dwell on shit too much. I, I, I can forget shit real quick. I, I don't hold grudges really. I just get going, so... This is my DJ right here for my solo tour coming up. Woo! Getting excited. Um, but yeah, uh, you know, I always just let it go. I, I always just, alright, cool. Good days, good day, whatever, and keep it moving, but... The shit I caught from fucking Pakalika shit, man, was... That was it for me. I was like, this ain't... I can't do this, dude. That was the right thing to do. If they don't want to go and they want to talk shit on me for going... Like, it's fine, you don't gotta, it's fine you don't wanna go, but don't talk some shit on someone for how they wanna represent for their friend or mem remember their friend. Um, you know, the last straw was my friend's death. I went to represent, everyone was so upset. Pakalika's benefit, man, I had to go. And all the shit I caught, it made me go so low. It's on a new one, so yeah, that's, yeah, that's it. Do you think it's possible you ever play with the Kings again? Not anytime soon, no, I never say never, but probably fucking never know. I don't think so. Not with all the shit they've said about me unless they get really apologetic and it's going to take years for me to even believe that. Um, at the time, were you against or for Dirtball and KMK roster? Uh, I was for Dirtball coming in. That was a time when D-Loke was going MIA and kind of doing his own thing and moved out of state and didn't know if he was going to be on the record, wasn't showing up to recording sessions. And so... We brought Dirtball in, and it was a kind of a fresh breath of air having him in there. It was fun working with new, a new artist, and so I, I was again, I was for it. I didn't mind it at all. Before you left, you see, before you left Camp K, did you see the group continuing for many more years? I hoped. I definitely hoped. Um, <clears throat> I see myself doing music for a long, many more years. Um, Somebody that actually works for the group, though, as funny as it is, before I left the group, um, in his mind, he said he thought that the Rob Zombie show was going to be the last Cottonmouth Kings show. And that was before I left the group. That was somebody who worked for Cottonmouth Kings. Works still, I think. I think they do. But he had said, yeah, I, I, I honestly think it's going to be the last show. And that was before I left. And, uh, but, you know, I, whatever. So, I, I don't dwell on them. I don't. I don't wish no ill will towards them. I'm just doing me. They can go, go do them. And fucking, I hope everybody has a great life, man. That's it. Um. Hang on, I switched. Um. What are the the views on? What are your views on as part of legal leave the group? Was the reason business or personal? It was strictly business. They wanted to cut his money. We all had decisions and talked about it, and <coughs> they were gonna cut his money. I didn't believe in the the amount they were gonna cut. I didn't think it was right. But it's strictly business, and he. It insulted him so much because it had been the same contract since we started and they wanted to change it now. That he just left and never came back. And there should have been talk. It should have been had a whole different way on everybody's sides, but it wasn't and it's a shame. And, you know, now he's dead, which sucks, you know. I'm just glad I got to see him and I'm glad that he knew I was his friend and I'm glad he knew how I felt about him. And I don't feel no... I sleep well at night knowing that, you know. Some people never get to fix problems with people. They, you know, he got to. I got to. Some people probably wish they would have said something. I, I, I don't to him. I'm good. Um, will you give your personal views, explanation of the falling out between Subnoy Zinger and the Cottonmouth Kings? In your opinion, were you given bad information that fed you to initially side with Daddy X and KMK? Um, yeah, yeah, uh, my, my views, 
between Zinger and the Carmel Kings. Um, Zinger actually resigned prior to all this because he saw it going downhill, and and he just he was stepped away from it. He put us a long time, a lot of time into the band, building the band, 16, 18 hour days, um, building the band up, working for the band, and he couldn't take it anymore as far as this shit going on the backs talking between because but, people talk to him about shit they've been trying to kick me out for years by the way just you know it's not new it's funny because they've been trying to kick me out for years I left and it's like kind of giving them their wish and then your, your you know wish came true now they just want to talk shit about it and get it all gnarly it's like fuck you this would be I thought fuck you know I couldn't win if I would have stayed in the group, I would have caught shit all the time fucking for being an individual, doing what I want to do. Still up there holding the show together. Still up there doing, you know, everybody else's backups, all the hooks and all my parts. And doing it, you know. D-Lo got sick, couldn't make a show, we did the show. Daddy X says he's going to leave, quit the band. We got shows next week. We do the show. I step up, do everybody's shit. I say I'm leaving. Give them two weeks. And they change the whole show up. I had to bring someone else out on stage with them. Yeah. It is what it is, man. But, uh... <coughs> uh, yeah, and I was giving bad information to initially side with Daddy X and KMK. Um, I definitely was told things that were the complete opposite of truth. I, at the time, wasn't speaking with the people, but when I got out of the group, I'd spoke, I now spoke with people where Daddy X has said, these guys say this, and this is their stand on it, and this is that, and I find out it's completely fucking not true. I mean, I should have known back when, uh, when he said he got stabbed in the neck, and he actually had surgery. He had like a cyst removed or a mole removed. I think it was a cyst. And he told everybody he got stabbed and, and took it as far as like, you know, just, a, and, and it wasn't. People were feeling real sad. I understand it was a joke at first. I think to him, he's just like, ah, oh. you know, it's funny. But it turned into a real serious thing and he still never came clean about it. And everything was always showmanship how do we make this bigger how do we blow how do we say more about this how do we make this more interesting that's why you never I never really spoke in interviews um cause I never knew what was gonna be said you know I didn't wanna contradict something he was saying cause I never knew what he was gonna say so I'll be speaking a lot more and doing a lot more things now. That's why I never really posted on the internet either because I don't want to catch shit for so, something else. I don't want people to mis misconstrue what I was putting up or saying and and then just talk more shit on me. I was over it. Um, if I could change anything about my music career, what would it be? Uh, fuck, I, I would have put more time into doing solo shit. Huh. Uh, um, I would have kept in touch with a few other artists that we've toured with that I, I really enjoy their music but uh certain things uh, not really too much of it though no I had a great time dude we had great times Come Out Kings that was a fun band it was a lot of it was great a lot of good good times and uh you know you and Deluxe seem to be some of the closest members of KMK what is your status between you and him currently and we don't talk um we haven't really talked or been real friends for many years that dude hasn't stepped foot in my house in years. Doesn't answer my phone calls. Even when I did call, I call in the middle of the afternoon. Talk about, I, I call everybody. I got I have song ideas, merch ideas, show ideas. No, no response, no answer, no call back. And I know that guy's got his phone in his hand all day long every day, because I tour with the guy all the time, so. And the fact that people I would be with would call me and he'd pick up. So he was just a, a, um, we, yeah. I mean, he moved a few months ago. I don't, I couldn't even tell you where he lives. I don't know. I haven't been to his house. We don't do barbecue together. We don't hang out together. We don't, 
do any we haven't for years and you know that was disheartening too because honestly when i was younger and we started off and we started the band i saw us growing up and having kids around the same time and fuck you know and raising them together and did and like having the fun childhood we did and all that and those dreams went i'd still have that i still wanted that for many years up to a few years ago and i'd come home from tour and and uh my girlfriend at the time he lived with me you know and I come home and tell her, yeah, no, we, we don't, we look, hung out. No, we're talking. It's going to be good. Yeah, he says to call him, we're going to hang out. Oh, let's do this. So we're going to start doing this. We're going to go to the shooting range. We're going to go do this. She'd be like, why you get your hopes up again? Why are you doing that? I was like, nah, he snow. It really seems like we're going to hang out though this time. Um, never did. <laughs> it was funny. It was sad, actually. It would bum me out, but we're not really friends. I don't, I don't expect him to call me. I don't. Uh, I'm, I'm not. I'm not. I'm done reaching out to that guy. Um, if he, he wants anything. I'm, I'm stoked for him having his kid. I hope that he has a happy, healthy baby. I hope that, you know, I hope, I hope the best for him. I just, I can't put any more of my time and, and energy into it. That just it is what it is. From the homie Lynn, cake or pie? Cake. I don't really like pie. Um. No collaborations on freaking out. Um, what can they expect? Will it sound similar to laughing though? No. It's all hip hop. It's all bangers. This guy G Rocka did it. That's uh, Soul Assassin's engineer and producer. And he did a, you know, like I said, did it Mug Studio in LA. No collabs on it though. <clears throat> but there will be a new record coming out. I'm gonna release a new EP a couple months after, like February, March, hopefully February. And then I want to put a full length out April, May. So, and that'll have more of that stuff on it. Freaking out kind of was, it will, it, will there be any of these issues with KMK addressing any tracks on freaking out? Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, I didn't start out. I didn't have the name freaking out. I didn't have any of that stuff in, in, in mind when I, when I wrote the track. Or when I when I left the group, but then all the shit I was catching and all the all the shit they were saying fired me up. I mean, I was like, "Damn, all right, oh fuck, all right." It pissed me off. You know what I mean? I mean, those are some heavy accusations for someone that doesn't know me. Doesn't even care to take the time. I always tell people, "You think I'm doing that? Come fucking to my house." Come over, I'll cook you dinner, we can hang out. Come over, fucking do, call me. Come, open door policy, knock on my fucking door. Surprise me. Come see what happened, fuck, see what you find out. Never did, they never, 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 never did. A couple people took me up on that offer that are mutual friends. And after one day hanging out with me, they're like, all right, never mind. I'm not worried anymore. I was like, yeah, you shouldn't be. <clears throat> but yeah, so there is, it's kind of, I vented a little bit, a couple tracks, I vented. Um, and and it's over and it's done that record's made it'll be coming out I'm not dwelling on it anymore it's time to move forward get it positive get it laughing and you know use, use music for what it's for sometimes it's for smashing and just ripping apart raps and partying sometimes it's for healing your soul sometimes it's for speaking on current events or issues or so, yeah, no, I'm, I'm going to be all over the place with the, the new records coming out. It won't, won't just be one. Um, what can you expect at a solo show first to come out King Show? Well, you can expect me up there rapping my ass off. You can expect uh, a lot of crowd involvement. You can expect a lot of fun, smiles, good times, high energy. Um... Not too much talking. Won't be a lot of fucking ranting in between songs. We're gonna keep it to the music, keep it rocking. Um, a lot of smiles, uh, uh, banging ass beats. Um, it's probably obviously it's gonna start out a little more intimate, playing some smaller places. So you you'd be high fiving, doing all that. I'll be at the merch booths. I'll be hanging out every night, saying what's up to all the fans, reconnecting with everybody, getting it back to what it used to be when we started this group, where everybody hung out with everybody. Um, and with the fans, because that's what I want to get back to. I want to come. I want to. I want to get back to to knowing everybody. 
and, and making more friends and uh, thanking everybody personally for the life they've given me and they afford me and and uh, continuing to support me I want to say thank you personally so come to a show and do that and, and we'll hang out and we'll have some fun no more looking over my shoulder we're just gonna have, it, it's, it's gonna be fun it's gonna be fucking off the chain I'm excited it's gonna be cracking um What's your take on the future of Suburban Noise Records? Uh, it's not my record company. I'm putting a record out on it. I didn't even have to put it out on Sub Noise Zinger. It helped me out with it. He got me he got me the beats, got me to go with the producer, studio time, and then asked me what, where I want to put it out on. He's not trying to hold me hostage. He's not trying to whatever. He would have let me go put it wherever I wanted. And uh, I just felt it right after all the shit he's been talked about and the fact that I already had a contract to do a record I said yeah I'll just do this one and when the second one I'm ready to do another one we'll talk I don't know what I want to go where I want to go with that one or what's up I'm not sure yet we'll, we'll cross that bridge when we get to it but Sperb Noise Records has been doing fine they've been still keeping on uh, Brad X still owns 40% of Suburban Noise Records Brad X still gets paid from Suburban Noise Records um, so uh, I, I I still see them doing things. I don't I don't believe after we left, not one other band left Suburban Noise Records. Strictly on like other bands bands come and go. Bands want to change things and do things. It is what it is. But no one left on direct reasoning of what we what X was saying because they went in and had meetings and asked all the questions and none of this was happening. What everything that's been claimed out was not happening to these other bands. And I don't even really know if it happened to us. I don't know what happened yet. We're still waiting. I'm still waiting to see every, all the paperwork. I'm keeping an open mind. Um, I'm waiting for the judge to say what happened. I'm done taking people's words for shit. It's been over a year and there's no lawsuit filed. And usually this because a lawsuit of this t nature of what they're talking about takes three to five years in courts to do so you figure you'd want to get it started at asap so you can start doing it and one of the reasons was well they keep digging and finding more shit out oh we found this out oh we just said her well the fact of the matter is too you can file a lawsuit and then you can actually add add stuff to it while it's happening as you find out more stuff you can put more stuff into it you don't have to wait till the very end and and then, then file it. So, uh, we'll find out, everybody. Stay tuned. See what happens. Um, I hope it's still recording. Oh yeah, we're still going. Another one was what? What's the? What's the status of underground music? Underground music is alive and well, man. The internet, underground music, internet. People can make their own. You got Pro Tools, you got microphones, you can do it at your house in your closet. You got tons of, everybody can do it. So, <clears throat> everybody can put their shit on YouTube. A lot of acts are, dis are discovered on YouTube. So, underground music is, is alive and well. And... And I don't think there's no stop. No one's gonna stop. Music, people love music. People love making music. There's a garage band down the street from me out here every day practicing. They're an older gentlemen, covers band, cover band. They're always rocking out. And I, they've gotten better over the last two years. They're fucking pretty dope. They do all the classic hits. It's it's dope. I actually listening to them from my backyard, but as long as they can they love making music and so they make music and they and they just do it for the love of it, which is beautiful to me. So that's it's pretty rad. Speaking of fan bases, I've noticed a considerable considerable decrease in numbers at Cottonmouth King shows. Do you think the group has seen its best years, or does there need to be a change in direction? <coughs> well, I have seen the uh, I've seen it. Yeah, the numbers have gone down. It's just a fact. I've seen the numbers on paper. Um, do I? think it needs to change the direction yeah I think it just needs it I mean I've felt that for a while but there's there's one guy in control of that group Brad X and 
everybody had their opinion, you could say what they wanted, but at the end of the day, that was the final decision. So, you know, they need a change. And it's not spending more money and getting bigger fucking props or getting bigger this or bigger that or bigger sound or bigger, it's not none of that. It's realness. Um, it's, uh, it's different songs, playing different live songs. It's uh, reconnecting with the fans. It's uh, fuck. There's a lot of things, but it's that's not my problem anymore. Like I said, that's hopefully they figure it out for for, for everybody that loves Conrad Kings and loves the music. I hope they figure it out for them. I hope they figure it out for themselves, for the new family look starting, for the family Brad already has. Um, for Bobby to take care of his dogs, I mean, fuck, you know what I mean, whatever, dude. I hope it works out for them. For Dirtball, so he can just live in the mountains and uh, have his property he got. Fucking whatever, dude. Like, I, I'm not a hate, hate, I really don't hold grudges. I'm not a hateful, crazy person, dude. It's up to those guys. So, fuck, I hope it works out for them. But that's up to them. I'm going to try to make it work out for me. I, I know that. I can't wait to embark on this new thing. Like I've already done a few solo tours. Uh, I had a blast on the Strange mu strange no music, strange Noise tours. I did Japan by myself. Um, Kamau Kings was supposed to go to Japan. And the day before we did, Brad uh, took a poll and they canceled it one day before. And uh, this guy Sato put it on in Japan and spent every last dime he had on it. And we we're trying to save money, cut corners, because we needed, everybody's hurting on money, we needed to pay bills, things of the nature. And so they didn't, they didn't get us work visas. Now, mind you, we had not had work visas. Half the times we had already gone to Japan. So, you know, five, six out of 10, 12 times, we did not have them to begin with. Um, we, so we've done it before and made it. I think the, the one thing that would have... The consequence of getting caught with something like that is they don't let you in their country. You get a plane, you go home. No jail time, no nothing really crazy about that. So, and, and this is right around the time, you know, Brad and Kevin were heavy into their problems. And Brad, in my opinion, was trying to find any way to make Kevin look bad and say he wasn't doing his job. So, he didn't get his work visas. <laughs> and I think Brad even knew that. Um, he usually, ha he okays everything. Like I said, he's, he, he runs the show over there. So, he, he knows everything. But the day before we were supposed to leave, he, he uh, pulled the plug on it. And we're, playing, we're headlining three festivals in three different cities. So, and then try to say it was Kevin doing a bad job managing. Whether it was or wasn't, that's, you know, whatever. But we had been there before, no work visas. Big B, now mind you, said he was still gonna go because he was going. He did, he felt bad for Sato, um, and I did too. So I guess Big B was talking to Brad X and X said, "Why don't you ask Victor if he'll go? He's done solo shit." So he called me up the night before. You want to go do? Yeah, fuck yeah, I'll go. Yeah, I'm gonna go. I'm in. Let's go. So. I went, I ended up doing a 45 minute set by myself, salvaging whatever name Sato had in the business in Japan over there, but this guy lived, breathed, ate Cottonmouth Kings. Suburban Noise, Japan. He ran Suburban Noise Records, Japan. But he loved Cottonmouth Kings. He fucking lived it. I went to his apartment. It was, dude, it was no bigger than his patio. But he's living it. Cottonmouth shit everywhere. Um, by and then before I left I got told to our tour manager called us called me and I'm sure someone had called him and told him to tell me this but they're like if you don't get paid over there come out Kings no one that works for us our booking agents people will not will not go for your money they will not you probably not getting paid anything you're not gonna another call if you get something happens at the thing they don't let you in the country it's not our responsibility come out Kings has nothing to do with it we're not taking any responsibility all on you. I'm like, fine, dude. Fuck it. I don't care. I'm going. Sato's been cool to us. Sato was in the U.S. during the major tsunami 
he was actually staying at Bobby B's house and uh, for weeks and thought he was his homie and and all that and then you know Bobby didn't show up to Japan either um, no one did but me I didn't get in any trouble either I got right in the country we'd done it before a million like, like I said five six times but it was a personal vendetta and the f sad part of is that that homie in Japan ended up losing his house his apartment um, losing his company uh, lost everything has to start over because because someone wanted to fucking prove a point to someone else it was fucked up and uh, that's a, that's loyalty for you I guess I don't know but fuck that's a sad story man I'm so I'm still sad for Sato but it's all good it's all good I probably can go back to Japan because I went and they're all about honor and respect and me showing up saved a little bit at least of Sato's respect and honor and and mine so and me and Big B had a blast so fucking it is what it is um I appreciate everybody's questions I hope that clears up some of it for you I really don't want to continue talking about it um it's time to move on trying to keep my life positive trying to do things trying to uplift people uplift people and uh and make music and have fun and fucking that's what i'm gonna do so i hope to see everybody fans everybody please come back out say what's up i want to meet everybody again like i said i don't care if you can i'm not gonna tell you what kind of clothes you can wear what kind of music you can listen to who you can hang out with I don't care. You can come to the show doing being you. Just be you. Come to the show and hang out. And fucking it'll be rad. Love to meet everybody. It's what I, it's what I'm it's one of the biggest rushes I get, you know. It's why I do this. So um that's it. The free king and I'm out. And uh I'll be back. Don't worry about it. Pew, pew.